And so the resurrection, the Lord began to deal with me. It's been, I'm, I've been stuck on it since Resurrection Sunday because I preached this message that when Paul said, oh, that I may know him. And I heard Peter talk about it just um, earlier when he talked about the resurrection and how they he had been ministering on that here recently. When, when, when Paul said, oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. The power of his, there is something the resurrection did that released me into the ability of God, the very power of God. All that I may know, Paul says, I've been trying to unpack what happened to me with the resurrection from the dead. He says, I've been trying to, 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 to know, he begins to go down talking about his pedigree and what he learned of the law. And he began to talk about all that he knows. And he was a Pharisee, a Pharisee and all. But he says, all that stuff I learned, I, I just kind of dung for the excellency of the knowledge of God. He says, I'm after something that happened in the resurrection that all that knowledge and human knowledge and human reasoning, he says, it can't even benefit me now. I'm after something in a dimension that everything I've learned, just forget about all of that. And, and that's the way some of us feel. There, there are people who have so much Bible information, information, they can quote it, they can teach it, they have all the information, information, information. But Paul said, information won't get me where I'm trying to go. He says, I need revelation. Oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. In other words, he's saying everything I've learned, in the law, everything I've learned studying the Pentateuch, everything I've learned, everything that I've attributed to my natural reasoning and education. He says there's something that happened to me when I got born again that I need a revelation of. I need it to be unpacked because he knew something happened with the resurrection. And all oh, stick with me because I got to take you to an empty tomb before you really understand the upper room. And the Bible declares that Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. And it was the apostle Paul. Think about it, who God gave revelation of what happened in the resurrection. That he didn't give it to Peter. He didn't give it to James. He didn't give it to John. He didn't give it to Matthew, Bartholomew. He didn't give it to those that walk with him. But Paul received a revelation that none of them had. And it is what happened with the resurrection. And when God revealed this revelation to Paul, he says in the book of Galatians that once God revealed this revelation to me, he says, I conferred not with flesh and blood. To think about it, he said, God gave me a revelation nobody else had ever heard before. And it was so deep when he gave it to me, he said, I couldn't talk to nobody about it. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, I, I couldn't even bring it up. I couldn't bring it up because God gave him by revelation and understanding of what happened in the resurrection that not even those that walk with him had. And Paul said, it took me three years after God revealed it to me before I went back to Jerusalem and told the disciples about it. And once he told them about it, he says, they also validated and testified that what I'm about to reveal to you is the truth. What is that revelation Paul is talking about? The thing that separated the resurrection of Jesus beyond every other resurrection that had 
ever transpired was the fact that this was a spiritual operation. Yeah, a spiritual operation, spiritual, spiritual operation. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead wasn't about a man coming back to life again. Many people have been resurrected from the dead physically, but Jesus' resurrection was a spiritual operation. <laughs> now, for you to understand this, you got to go back and let me unpack. Let me unpack what happened in Genesis chapter number one, when the Bible says, and God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But then the Lord speaks to Adam and says, you're in my image, you're after my likeness, you have my spirit, my DNA, you have my mind, you have my, my emotions, you have my authority, you have been given stewardship over the earth realm. And I give you one commandment, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. You know the story, Adam eats of the fruit and he dies. But now he's not dead physically. He lives to be 930 years old. So what death is God talking about? Come on, you go to King of Kings, you, you know this. <laughs> he's talking about spiritual death. Which means if you eat of that tree, you're spiritual. Spirit is going to die. And what God calls spiritual death is the absence of his nature. The absence of his image. It is the absence of his peace, his joy, his mind. It is the absence of the godness that brought him alive. And when Adam ate of that fruit, his spirit, his spirit literally became estranged from God, separated, lost God's image, likeness, lost God's download, lost God's mind. He lost all of what I call the divine DNA that was put on the inside of his spirit. And from that moment forth, man became spiritually dead. And you can't even get out of the first family before Cain kills Abel. And then you can't even get to Noah before God repents that he even made men. Because now that men have dead spirits, they are producing nothing but dead works. They are sinning. They're doing everything under the sun. They're under the control of, of the enemy. Satan has become their master because Satan is the Lord over the spiritual dead. Did you hear what I said? He is the master over dead spirits. And he had basically became the ruler of humanity because of the spiritual condition to the point where David says we were all born in sin and shapen in iniquity. Sin is the nature that produces sinning. Sin was the nature that came on the inside of us after Adam died, spiritual death. And because our spirits were dead, we produced dead works. We produced dead behavior, dead actions. Now, remember when I say dead, I'm not talking about breathing. I'm not talking about inhaling and exhaling. I'm talking about absence of God's nature and life, absence of God's mind, absence of God's love, joy, peace, gentleness, faith, temperance, meekness, absence of God's authority and the ability to function like God. And the Bible declares that we were spiritually dead. Our spirits were dead and we were like that for 4,000 years until, uh oh, <laughs> until 
what God had foreordained from the world. Stick with me because this is about Pentecost. I'm telling you. So now the Bible declares Jesus comes on the scene. And this man, this babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, this man that's about to walk among us is about to give us a revelation of something. He is about to show us what a man that is born of the spirit of God looks like in flesh. In other words, every man we see from Adam is just a dead man walking. Even though they're breathing and talking, they do not house the capacity of God. They do not house the capacity of heaven. But when Jesus shows up on the scene, he is not born of a man. He is born of God. And the same spirit that breathed life into Adam is the one who quickened Mary's body belly and born out of her was this spirit being from heaven wrapped in flesh. And when we look at him, we are looking at what a living spirit looks like in the earth realm. And Jesus, oh my God, let me calm down because I feel myself starting to get a little tipped over in the spirit. <laughs> the Bible declares Jesus walks among us and shows us what a live living spirit looks like in flesh. He shows us as the last Adam what it is like to see a man in the earth spiritually alive. And because he is a man in the earth, he has to be anointed. He has to be anointed. And so now Jesus goes into the Jordan River and he receives something that was different than any other man had ever received. Because God told John, the thing that will be the mark, the demarcation, the thing that will be the sign that you will know the Messiah from any other person will be this. Upon whom you see the Holy Spirit descend and remain, that is the one. In other words, the Holy Spirit had come up on a lot of men. It came up on Elijah and he outran Ahab, Ahab's chariots barefooted. It came up on Samson where he took a jawbone. It would come up on a lot of people, but it would lift off them because it was never God's will that the Holy Spirit come up on men. It was God's will that the Holy Spirit come within men. <laughs> and in the old covenant, he could only come up on them for a service, for a duty, but then he would have to lift off them because he could not reside in them. But God told John, when you see the Holy Spirit come on somebody and not lift off of them, that is the sign that that is the one, because that is the one that the Holy Spirit doesn't just come upon, he comes within because he has the ability to house the very spirit of God. 